Okay, we're here with Mark Ashton, Ipswich Town CEO and uh, manager, Kieran McKenna. Guys, thank you for giving over the early part of your Valentine's Day <laughs> evening to speak to us. How are, you, how are you both doing? Good, thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to speak to you, um, especially if it gets me out of doing anything more expensive or <laughs> exuberant on Valentine's Day. So, yeah, nice way to spend the evening. Um, how how are you settling in, Kieran? It's two months now coming up to you. How, how, are, you, how are you settling into Suffolk and, and Ipswich life? Yeah, well, um, obviously it's it's heavily weighted towards the work side of things in terms of the, the, the life balance at the moment, but that's the way I enjoy it as well. Um, yeah, lovely area. People said that to me before I moved down. It was a, a really nice area and, and really nice people, and um, that's certainly proved to be the case. Um, I stayed in Central Ipswich for a little while um, at the Salt House, and, and yeah, it was looked after really well, and that gave me a chance to get in and around the town a little bit more. Um, and meet people around there and, and they've, everyone's been really welcoming. Um, yeah, at the moment we're, we're still looking for a property for myself and my family. Obviously my, my wife and my kids are still in commuting from Manchester at times because the, the kids are at school and, and making sure that we, we make the move at the right time for them as well. So at the moment we're house hunting. Um, if anyone knows of any nice houses around the Woodbridge area, then <laughs> feel free to send them into the club. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, we're house hunting at the moment. So that, that's the only challenge is, is obviously in this job at times you, you have to work away from your, your home and, and away from the family at times and that's difficult. But thankfully they're very supportive and, and being able to travel down at times and I've made it up to Manchester a couple of times as well. So no, settling in well, um, really enjoying the area and getting to know all the people down here and, and looking forward to the summer when I can have the family down here as well and, and find a more permanent mm. base. Mark, you're an old hat at Suffolk now, aren't you? Seven months. Seven, seven months. Seven months. Yeah, I look like I've been here more than seven months. <laughs> um, but no, it's great. As, as I said time and time again, the people of Suffolk and, and Ipswich have been so welcoming. It's been, it's, it's been fantastic. Um, really enjoying being here. Um, a bit like Kieran, but it's very, very workloaded. Mm. Well, it's not often we get both manager and CEO together talking, mm. so we'll try and sort of come up with some topics that are relevant to both of you, really. Um, mm. Let's go back to, to Kieran being appointed and, and the interview process. Um, when, when did you get the first phone call, Kieran? And then how did, you know, how did the interview process, was there an interview process? Um, talk us through all of that. Yeah, obviously I can give some details, but obviously was was still under employee with a, a pretty major employer as well. So um, obviously Mark did everything right in terms of being respectful with them and, and making sure the contact was through them. But no, I, I, yeah, initially spoke with Mark on the on the telephone. Um, we met. It was maybe on a on a Sunday evening. I think we we said we we managed to to meet face to face after a telephone call, and and he went through his. His plans for the club and the, and the owner's plans for the club and where the club is at um, in terms of the yeah the takeover and the ambitions going forward. Most of which I'd I'd read about from afar, but it was it was really good hearing that from Mark. Um, yeah, he spoke about the squad and and the plans for the squad and and the type of profile of manager that they were looking for. Um, and yeah, I I uh, spoke about my experiences and how I how I saw the club from afar, how I like to to coach and. Um, we spoke about making that step from being a coach to a, a manager and um, how I felt I would take that step so yeah we had a good conversation um, and then yeah Mark obviously from there it was Mark obviously was, was in good dialogue with, with United as well um, I was in good dialogue with United had a, we had a couple of days of, of conversations with um, yeah the, the directors at United um, John Murray, Dan Fletcher obviously had a really good working relationship already going with, with Ralph Ragnick, um, who came in and was really enjoying working with him. So um, had to have some, some conversations with him and he was, you know, really respectful and um, supportive and, and yeah, did his, you know, spoke to me really keenly about trying to keep me to the end of the season at least and really wanted me to stay on. But when I, I made it clear to him that, you know, this was an ambition I'd had for a long time to, to take the step into management and I felt like this was absolutely the perfect opportunity for him for me um he was supportive of that so yeah after we spoke with mark there was a, a few days in between the the two clubs i think mark has a, a good relationship with with united as well so so he spoke to them directly and thankfully everything was done you know very respectfully i managed to leave on really good terms with with everybody at the club uh, with with well wishes from everybody and um really pleased in in the way it was handled and and thankfully it didn't take too long and I was able to get down here and get started um, pretty quickly after our first conversations. Who's, who's selling 
the sales pitch? Does it come from, from both sides? It sounds like it probably you, there was a bit of an open door to push out from, from both parties here. Is, it, is that fair to say? Um, I think, I, think it, I would describe it as a meeting of minds. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we said we were going to run a, a detailed process, and we did. Um, and you know, we we run quite an analytical process. Um, and I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but there were four hundred and fifty managers' names, um, past, present, current, on on that list. And we run wide ranging data sets initially on on those names. Um, and I have to say, this is where. Um, my colleagues in the US, particularly Ed Schwartz, um, w- was was fantastic. Um, Michael Leary, Jam, was fantastic, and because I think they could see that I was looking at a, a wide ranging names, but didn't feel I'd found what was right for this football club, and they reminded me uh, on what I'd recruited historically, um, and giving managers their their first their first job, and how successful that had been at been at other clubs. Um, and I, uh, listen, I'll be honest with you, one of my jobs is to re- keep an eye on young up and coming coaches. Kieran was absolutely at the top of that list that I kept, kept an eye on him for a while. My question was, could we persuade Kieran to leave the biggest club in the world um, in a very, very good job um, and, and, and come, to, come to us? Um, so when I met him, it was very late actually, Kieran, on a Sunday night. Yeah, it was. Very, yeah. very late. And I think it was like, where? It was between uh, Birmingham and uh, Manchester. Motorway no services? Um, is that what so we're I'm doing? Not saying, yeah, I'm not saying <laughs> yeah. anything, but there was rooms hastily booked. Um, and we, we met, um, and it, it wasn't a sales pitch at all. Um, I think what for me, what was key is our values marred each other's, you know, honesty, integrity, hard work. Here in the one in making blush, but has got a very high level of IQ. Um, he's an outstanding communicator, um, and he's bloody good at what he does. Uh, and that came across. So I just talked about the club, what we were trying to do, how we were trying to build it. Kieran talked about his philosophy, his values, and I just genuinely felt there was a meeting of minds. Um, and then Kieran's right, we came away from that. We had more conversations. Um, he made it clear he wanted to come in that process we'd spoken to, to, to Manchester United um, and as I said particularly Ed Woodward was very helpful in, in how we executed that I'm not going to lie I was nervous because we've got very little leverage against the biggest club in the world to get one of their highly regarded young coaches out of there and they told me that um, but Kieran made it really clear to them that he wanted to join us he wanted to take a step into management um, and again, Ed Woodward and United were very clear with me. Mark, their words were, take care of him, um, because we value him really highly. And I'm delighted that, that we got it across the line. Clearly, you're talking about Ed, Ed Woodward there. That's a, a reference in itself. But with other managers, with, with managerial track records, you can see their track record. You've seen they've got promotions. What about ref, like references? Is, did that take on a more important piece in this? Not really, because part of my job is to do that all the time. So I'm always intrigued at where the next generation of coaches are coming from, where the next generation of managers are coming from. It's really easy to run data sets and profiles on existing managers and the experience they've got. That's a fairly simple exercise. It's always more challenging with coaches who are making that step into management. But I've tracked Kieran for, for the last couple, couple, of, couple of years. Um, our, our paths haven't formally crossed, but there's a number of people that you know. I've worked with Martin Pert before. Um, you know, I've had conversations with Man United about up and coming coaches before, and Kieran's always been at the top of, of, of that list. And I think we just had a moment in time from both sides where it felt right. And I think if either party hadn't felt right for whatever reason, it wouldn't have happened. So I was delighted that it was, and again, United were, as ever, totally professional, and we got it across the line. You talk, you think you've both talked about there being almost an element of, of fate about this in terms of it being a, a good marriage. You talked about your track record in giving managers their first chance. Ipswich Town as a football club has, has a history of that. If you look back, obviously, at Robson, Ramsey, Burley, all men in, there in similar age to you, Kieran, that were at the start of their sort of managerial journey so there's a fit there as well isn't there? You know what I think it's an important point you raise that because I've, I've said this at forums and, and 
AGMs recently. I've been in this game for 30, 35 years, and whilst I know football, I'm very much still learning Ipswich and I'm learning, learning Suffolk. And I don't want to embarrass anyone, but I spoke to two or three what I would call really good, solid, former Ipswich Town people in the process and talked about the values of the football club, the values of the fan base, the history of the football club, how this football club is expected to be seen and the type of people that it's had traditionally and how, how important that is to key stakeholders in and around the football club. And that, and that helped shape my mind a little bit. Um, and they reminded me of what this club had done history, historically sorry, and how, how it had conducted itself. And that just again re-endorsed how right I felt Kieran was for, for, for this role and, you know what we, I forget it feels like we've been six months and we're still mm-hmm. only seven or eight weeks in yeah. so far I've seen everything that I would have hoped what, what are the bits of the job that have um, surprised you Kieran and I, I know you've you've been in you've you've worked very closely with managers mm-hmm. um, so you'll you'll have been aware of, of of the frontline tasks that a manager faces are there bits that You've enjoyed more than you, you thought you would. Are there bits that um, you've kind of realised that I, I kind of have to take that on? I, I guess you, you're a man who's is most happy on on the grass and, and coaching players, but um, there are some extra layers for you now, isn't there? Yeah, there are. Yeah, um, I don't think anything's massively surprised me. To be honest, as you say, I've been around it so much, and especially being around at Man United, it, it, there's, there's maybe no managerial job in, in world football that has more scope and. Uh, yeah, impact than that. So having been so close to that, um, obviously it was probably as good a preparation as you could get without having done the done the job yourself. Um, yeah, I think for me, the fundamentals of it aren't very different. When I was a, a coach, you, certainly with my role at United and the the, um, the amount of responsibility that, that I had, your job was to come in in the mornings, come in early, prepare training, um, think about what the players needed in terms of sessions to improve them individually as a team and um, yeah think about the next game and how to prepare the game and how to try and win that game so that's the fundamental of the job and that hasn't changed much for for myself as a manager and certainly not in terms of how I, how I do the job um, yeah the extra bits um, in terms of yeah the media and the recruitment and these things are, are again things that I've been in and around even at Man United when you're taking the youth team you have to do MUTV twice a week so it's not it's not very different when you're involved at academy level, you're recruiting the best talent and re- retaining the right talent is a massive part of the job. Um, I think the bits that probably hit you every every once in a while is the the scale and the importance of representing the club as the, as the figurehead um, and differences, things like doing the AGM last week and seeing the, the just hitting you the importance and the scale of, of it. To everybody, when you meet people in and around the town, and and again, you're that instantly recognisable face of the of the club in, in such a massive club in a county club that means so much to everyone in Suffolk, not just in Ipswich, um, and things like seeing the yeah seeing the support there in in a, on Saturday at MK and seeing seven thousand people travelling across the country to watch us play. It's just yeah, every once in a while the the scale. Um, of of being the the figurehead and and the leader of the football side of the of the club, it, it hits you and but it hits you in a pleasant way. Um, I don't think it's it's not surprised me, but every once in a while it takes you back and and you feel privileged and you feel that that responsibility and that pressure in a good way to you know do your best, try and make the right decisions for the football club because you see how much it means to everyone. Um, obviously, at, at uh, in in any first team coach's role. You're doing your absolute best, but ultimately the the final responsibility doesn't fall on your shoulders, whereas in this role it does. Um, and yeah, every once in a while you get a, a nice reminder of that. So far, pretty much all those reminders have been positives, like the the support on Saturday, um, and it's something that I've I've really enjoyed. I've enjoyed having that extra responsibility on my shoulders and um, looking to be the one alongside Mark and the board, um, but from a from a football side, the one who, who leads this club forward. How important is this relationship between the two of you? It's obviously you're heading up the football side, Mark. You're you're heading up the business. Um, so how important is this relationship to to how Ipswich Town functions? From my point, of, no, you from my point of view, very important. Um, yeah, to have that support. I think that's something that you know, preparing to go into management. Um, everyone who I spoke to and and throughout pro licenses and all those things. 
the advice you always get is, is be very careful which club you choose, be very careful of the board or the sporting director, or in this case the CEO who you're, who you're reporting to to make the right choice. Um, so that was really important for me as Mark says he he's done done his re- research around me but it's important for me to do that as well and, and spoke to people like Brendan Rogers who who give um, who Mark gave his, his first opportunity in management to and, and spoke to him about um, you know how Mark was at that time and how he was with him and, and again just had really good feedback about yeah he'll be really supportive he'll help you out he'll make your job easier not harder most days and, and got really positive feedback so um, it's really important for me to have that that link that that clear link with um, you know with the club with Mark and um, yeah I say I've I've had really good feedback from people who've worked with him before and and certainly my finding so far in the job is that it's been a, a really um, clear help to me in in on the day to day on the running of things uh, but also long term to have someone who who's overseeing the, the planning of of things both at the stadium the training ground the club and all aspects. To have that good communication and that link has been really useful to me. Yeah, you happy with how it's going then? It uh, seems listen, like it. Ab- absolutely. I, I go back to it. Kieran, one of Kieran's key qualities is he's a really good uh, communicator, uh, and the feedback that you get from the players, uh, I think, emphasises that. Um, and he has a high level of IQ, and that's that can only be be a good thing. It's the key, it's ultimately I think the key relationship um, be, between the CEO or the sporting director or, and and the manager, um, and the communication between those two are absolutely key. My job is sometimes to create a bubble around the manager to give him the oxygen to do his job freely and not be worrying about the million things that are going mm-hmm. on every day in in, in the football club. Um, but it is a partnership. Um, there are other key people in and around that who are close to that. Whether you know whether it's Martin Per, whether it's Andy Rolls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a, it's a real team effort. But you know, on that football side, Kieran has to lead that. And I think it wasn't semantics. That's why we wanted. I wanted him to come. I wanted him to be really clear. He was coming as a manager, not head coach, manager, and what that entails and the level of responsibility that Kieran had with the title manager. Um, and you know, so far, so far, so good. Was that important for you, Kieran, having that that job title rather rather than head coach? It wasn't something that I'd I'd particularly um, yeah particularly pushed on or anything like that. Obviously, that was how the role was presented. Um, I think it's more in terms of what the role entails. You want to be somewhere where you feel supported, um, where you're able to, as like like Mark says, has have the oxygen to do the work on the grass and send most of your focus with the players. Um, was what I wanted, but you also. You know, ideally, want a job where you feel like you have the ability to impact things in other area of the club. Um, you have support around you, but also you have a good say in, in the running of of all aspects of the club. So it's more about the, the the scope of the job and the responsibility that you were given. And obviously, that in in this job is is a managerial job, but it's not more about the title. It's more about the support that I feel from the club and the support that I've had from Mark and the directors and. And people like Andy Rose and, and the performance team that Mark has around is it's the support I've had from all of them that that makes the the role such an enjoyable one. How often are you speaking? On is it daily? Multiple times yeah, daily? I think I, listen, I think in a transfer window we probably speak four or five times a day. Um, other times now we'll speak most days, um, but it's not wasted words. If we need to speak, we speak. Um, the training ground is. Is Kieran's domain. Um, I'm not at the training ground every day. I've never been at the training ground every day. I wish I had the time to be at the training ground every day. I try and go down once every couple of weeks and watch training. Mike O'Leary does the same. Um, I think Mike's down this week. Yeah, he's down Friday. Yeah. Um, but again, my job is to give Kieran and the staff the oxygen, the resource to do their job to the best of best of their ability. I think that leads us on quite nicely to a broader chat about recruitment. That is one of the extras that comes with, with management. You've just had your first transfer window in, in senior management. Never before is the dynamic between CEO and manager more important when, when you're looking to, to bring players into a football club. So mm-hmm. between the two of you, could you outline how, how that recruitment dynamic works at Ipswich Town? I'll put it this way, I'll be delighted if every transfer window was like the January transfer window. It was, <laughs> it was calm as it, as it, as, as it could be. I think one of one of the things I was slightly anxious about with the, this January window was Kieran had taken the team for one game and we were into a window. Mm. Um, and again, Kieran is what you see. He's calm, he's considered, 
he's methodical in his his approach. So there was, it wasn't erratic, um, and uh, it was as planned as it could be with a manager who was joining us in in a window. Um, but we we're in the process actually of recruiting probably at least two people into the recruitment department who will be again specialists in that area. Um, but it's such a key area. I don't want to rush, or we don't want to rush, and get that wrong. So myself, Kieran, Luke Waren, um, Gary Probert, um, and Martin Pert's been superstar in this scene. Have come together and really started now to design what we want that department to look like. But it's a it's a collective approach. Um, it, it has to be a collective approach uh, to, to suit the needs of what we need as a football club. So again, we, we work together. Um, you know, Andy Rolls works in it as from a, a performance perspective because there's no good as recruiting a technical and tactical player that can't physically do what Kieran wants them to do. Um, Gary Probert pulls it all together. That's part of his key role. Gary Probert's role is also to make sure that the pathway is in place for you know the 18 to 23s into the first team. And the good thing with Kieran here is you have a manager who really values the importance of academy and pathway. So again, I go back to it, it's a collaborative approach. Um, and again, to be clear, manager has absolutely final sign off. It's in his contract, as it's in every manager's contract who works for me. No player comes into the first team without the manager signing, not signing off on it. So it sounds like there's multiple people within this football club and there's gonna be more to come that are putting names into the hat, whether they come from the data dashboard that we, we've heard a lot about, Mark, whether it comes from, from Gary or yeah. Andy or, or others or Kieran yourself, and then, and then what a collaborative effort to kind of narrow, narrow that field down and, and, and Kieran, in the end, you're making the call on, on who comes into the building. Is, is that I, I think fair? I think that's fair. We, we had this conversation, funny enough, um, I'm losing track of my days, last night, Sunday evening. Um, what makes it really easy for us is you've seen all the games that Kieran and his staff have taken. There is a clear DNA emerging of how Kieran wants to play. That makes it so much easier for a recruitment team because it, Kieran's in, Kieran clearly explains to them what a centre half looks like, what a right back looks like, what a nine looks like, what a ten looks like in a Kieran McKenna team. That absolute clarity of purpose makes it much easier for whether you're physical, technical, tactical recruitment, data recruitment, scouting, whatever you do, there are no excuses because Kieran and Martin and Charlie, yeah. all three make it really clear what they are looking for. So when we had, we went into January with a raft of names for Kieran to look at, no, 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 maybe, maybe, yes, because he was very clear on what he wanted. Recruitment's massive in football, isn't yeah. it? It's, um Coaching that you love and improving yeah. what you've got is is great, but recruitment is where you where you make your biggest profits. It's where you it's where you imp- where, where you level up your side. Yeah, um, yeah, very much so, very much so. And I said that's why it's, it's going to be such an important summer for us coming up. Like I said the, the club have had a big um, a big overhaul last summer, brought in a, a lot of good players. I have to say, and a lot of good people. I've come into the club over the summer, um, so we're in a, a strong position in terms of the squad. But I think it's going to be a, a really big summer for us now. I say we, like Mark says, we came in in a, in a time where there was one game, partly thanks to COVID, but one game before the window started. A really, a, a large squad um, who've who've arrived under different managers and at different times. So, for me, the the absolute priority in January was was stability. Um, first of all, with the with the squad to. Um, make sure that our numbers and, and our depth was at an appropriate level for the rest of the season to make sure that we weren't wasting talent in the building because in every managerial change there can be certain players who maybe didn't suit uh, uh, another manager's style of play or didn't do well in a particular period for any time and could do well in, in a different period or a different style of play. So it's about maximising what we had in the building first and then being really clear about which positions we felt like we could strengthen and needed to strengthen if possible in January. Um, but I think what we have done is left ourselves in a really good position for the summer now. I think we've we didn't make any rash decisions. Um, we tried to be very methodical and prepare as well as we could for the rest of the year, but leave ourselves in a really good position for the summer. That um, yeah, we know there's there's going to be good backing from the club again. Um, like Mark said, I think everyone is is becoming clearer within the club and and hopefully within. 
the the supporter base as well and around the club of the type of players and and the type of um, football that that we want to see on the pitch and that's going to make the process a lot easier and and we now have time over the next few months to you know as Mark said add to that department in terms of personnel but also make sure that we've we're maximising what we have in the building and giving ourselves a real good chance to to have a look externally and see what players are going to come in, um, fit into what we do, but also improve what we do. And like you said, it's such a big area where we can we can make immediate gains. Um, coaching and development is is massive, but it's it's a massive um, opportunity to to fast forward that process if we can bring in the right profile of players who we know are going to slot into to how we play, and it, it can make us it can improve us very quickly. If we if we manage to make the right decisions, so um, yeah, it's uh, it's something I'm looking forward to. Um, I say at the moment the the priority is obviously the games, the Saturday Tuesdays, and um, getting as many points as we can. But I'm looking forward to that that process in the summer, um, whatever position we're in, to uh, to be able to to build the the squad as I want to do going into pre season and going into pre season with um, some of the talent that we have in the squad at the moment, but also with some fresh faces who. I think we'll be able to come in and hit the ground running for us. Is Luke Wolford done a good example? You used the phrase "not not wasting what was in the building." Is, is Luke maybe a good a good example of of that? Because he's gone from a player that wasn't wasn't playing games to playing every game. Yeah, very much so. Um, I say I can't speak on on previously because I don't know exactly what his situation was. Um, but yes, obviously he wasn't playing a lot. He was a player I could see instantly on on seeing him that has really good attributes. Um, obvious to anyone who's seen him play is obviously to go alongside his, his size and his physical presence, but his composure on the ball, his ability to build from the back, his ability to read the game um, and to play and distribute the ball calmly and also to defend and anticipate things calmly was um, is his strong points and that's something that you know I really value in that position and thought was going to be really important for us going forward. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's obviously... Been a big positive for us over the last over the last two months or whatever it is. Um, still got things to improve on. Still a young player, um, but is 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 on a good run in the team. And like you say, it's a prime example of of just making sure that um, everybody, when a new manager comes in, everyone gets looked at with a fresh set of eyes. Because you know, football is subjective sometimes. Um, a player who, who might not do quite so well in a certain time period can do very well in another time period and that's been proved at, at all levels of the game so um, yeah Luke's a good example but there are there are other examples as well within the squad of, of players who I've, I've looked at and thought that yeah they could they could fit in well to what we want to do Mark we're not we're not talking about another 19 this summer are we? God I hope not I <laughs> um, just said I look much older seven months on um, I, I wouldn't think so. I think that was that was a unique moment in time. Um, we knew there was some risk in what we had to do in the summer because of the time period we got and the amount of change that, that that was trying to be driven all in one window. But no, I think it'll be it'll be calmer. I still think there'll be players in, players out. There always is in transfer windows. But again, by by the summer, um, whatever division we're in, Kieran will have had plenty of time to look at the squad. He's already we're already having weekly recruitment meetings now about the summer and I think we already know very clearly the, the type uh, of, of player and the type of person that Kieran wants to bring into the football club. Mm. Um, I don't know if you'd have, you, you'd have seen it, there was an interesting kind of exchange on Talk Sport this week, with, I think you might have done, with, with Jack Wilshere and Darren Bent. Darren Bent selling Ipswich Town to Jack Wilshere. I'm, I'm not suggesting that Jack Wilshere is arriving here, but how, how do you sell Ipswich Town to, to prospective signings? Does it need much? What's your... What's your sales technique to, to get um, people to... Dominic Thompson, for example, What he's, he's swapped the Premier League for, for Ipswich Town in the, in the last last few weeks. You ask a really good question. I, I think there are two parts to it. The, 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 the first part of it, I think Ipswich sells itself. And I think what we've what we've done is we've made people look over the fence now at Portman Road and go, what's happening over there? Because we're creating positive positive noise, both, I think, both on and off the pitch. Um, so it... You know, when you talk about the history and the tradition of the football club to to agents and players and, and, and other clubs, etc., it's not a difficult sell. Um, and the reality of it is the fans, and this is down to the fans, the fans have made my pitch to sell this football club after 7,000 have travelled to MK Dons on Saturday a damn sight easier. So, to all of them, thank you, because I will use that in the summer when we're trying to attract players to this football club. Dominic, 
down to Kieran. Kieran had those conversations. I'll let, I'll let you let him answer that. Yeah, I think obviously the the main thing, like like Mark has said, is the obviously the history and tradition of the club is sells itself, and that is a, a really big point for players coming into the club. Even no matter where we where we are, where we have been in the league, people still know that it's a it's a huge club. Um, for me, then it's yeah, it, it's it's falls to me then to, to speak to players about the, the football project. Um, I think players nowadays are, are really and, and much more so than previously interested in the playing style and they want to they want to and, and very often interested to play a certain style of football um, that they feel that they can excel in individually, that they can develop in to progress their own careers. Um, so that's a big point for us. Um, I think about speaking about how we how we work in training and our methodologies and um, what the what the type of work they'll be doing is is um, is again something players are more interested in now. They want to know more about their about, about their working day, about what we're going to be working on, about how the what the team's philosophy is, what the team's principles are. Um, so I can I can always speak to them about that. So Dominic, for a good example, had yeah plenty of of interest from Championship level. Plenty of interest from um, clubs higher up the pyramid from us, and, and had played Premier League football um, a month before he arrived against Man City. So, um, yeah, I won't. I would. I certainly won't tell any lies. I won't um, promise anyone anything that I can't guarantee. But all that I could promise to 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 a Dominic, for example, is that I think it's going to be. It is a really good place to play football. It's going to be a really good place to play football. We will play a positive and proactive style of play. We will dominate most, if not all, games with the ball and, and bring, the, bring the game to the opposition. So for someone in that position, in his position as a young player trying to develop himself as an as attacking fullback, I can say, look, you're going to have um, lots of opportunity to, to get forward, to try and create and score and, and uh, play, in, play in an attacking role um, with big demands on you defensively in terms of your recovery runs, which is going to help your development as well. So... Um, yeah, I think we're in a in a good position at the moment in terms of being able to, from a football perspective, say, look, this is how we'll train, this is how we play, um, this is what you'll get out of it individually. Um, I always say to the players who, who are coming in or I'm speaking to, team comes first, um, it's the club comes before anything that you want to do individually. If you're going to come in here, you're going to have to buy into the team culture, you're going to have to fit in with the team goals and, and work towards the team. But once you do that and once that's uh, hopefully a given, I think this is going to be a really good place for footballers to come, enjoy their football, develop, improve and, and progress in their careers, hopefully with the team going alongside them. And how close is that deal for Jack Wilshere? <laughs> you know better than that, boys. <laughs> um, can, can I just say this on, on Kieran's behalf? Because he, he, he can't say this. When you're taking um, either Dominic Thompson, who's got championship interest, or Tariq, who's got championship mm-hmm. interest, um, I can do the club piece. I can, you know, I can talk about the history and tradition of the club. Why come come to it? But these boys are not stupid. This is their career. So what they do is they reference Kieran. Let's be really clear. They will they will know players at Manchester United. They will know current players in the Ipswich Town Squad. They will call them. And the feedback that, that that's come to me is just how good Kieran Martin's Charlie's coaching is. And these young players want to be coached. Um, and Dominic made that very clear. He chose to come here. T could have gone uh, championship. He made it. He wanted to be. And the reason for that, I think, the predominant reason for that is they've referenced Kieran, and the noise that's coming out of the training ground. That's the players yourselves. He's really positive. I know we're joking about the Jack interview, but it was mentioned in there about. I'm not sure about League One. Show me some clips. But <laughs> Saturday was a fantastic advert for League One. And do you think that sort of almost sniffy attitude towards dropping down into the third tier is? Is changing a little bit in terms of the, sort of some of the quality of football that we've seen in, in the, the last few weeks and under yourself, Kieran. Um, hopefully, hopefully. Look, we already have. Uh, if you go through our squad at the moment and count the players who've, who've been at Premier League clubs or played regular Championship football, I think you'd be you'd be well into the teens. So um, there are people like Sonia Loco who's, who's played you know lots of. Of top tier football and, and comes in and, and enjoys how we train and enjoys how we play and I've had some great conversations with him about the the managers who he's played under and the games that he's played in and, and um, yeah he's he's really positive and supportive of the work that we're doing in uh, in comparison to that so um, 
yeah, look, I, I, say, I think I said in an interview last week, I think the, the level, in my opinion, of of coaching in this country um, is at a good level. I think it's it's going up, um, certainly from a technical and tactical perspective at Premier League level over the last um, you know five years plus with, with the quality of some of the managers that are coming into the English game at the top level. And I think that 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 is and will filter down. That's filtering through, you know, through the academies, through um, all coaches at all levels who study and watch the games at that level, and the principles and and the style of play is, is and will filter down through the through the divisions. I think that's that's happening in in quite a few of the championship clubs at the moment. If you look at yeah the quality of football that that Fulham and and Bournemouth play at the top of at the top of the championship it's of a really high level and I think it's that's that's going down through the championship and I think it's it's coming towards League One as well. Um yeah I think if you look at the game on Saturday, um ourselves I think primarily from a maybe semi biased point of view, the quality of our play, but also to be fair to MK, the the style of football and the quality of some of their play at times as well. Um I think it's uh yeah, I think the the level is good, the level will improve and, and continue to improve and um I said players, any ex Premier League players, but uh, Jack Wimple, uh, Jack Wilshire, for example, someone who's who's played Champions League football. They players want to to come and they want to play in an enjoyable style of play and they want to play in a in a style of play that they feel developed them and and uses their attributes best. So um, I think if if you can have that in place at your club, it's it's certainly going to help with recruitment and it's certainly going to help with bringing in high quality players in the building. Last time we spoke to you, Mark was. I think after the summer window closed, you were you were off for a big lie down. I think after after the nineteen players and twenty plus out, and we, we were reflecting on that. And two words you used a lot in that conversation were, were time and patience. Yeah. Um, the one ingredient we need is to add some time and patience. Now, obviously, we're sitting here with with a different manager in the hot seat um, to to your right now. Um, how much time does Kieran get? I have to ask that. There's no, <laughs> there's no other way of asking that in in terms of a very straight way. Um, I think, I think, go, go. If you go back to my manager Giro career and you look at what I've done in Stoke, I don't, I'm not one for chopping and changing every five minutes. Um, listen, ultimately, you sometimes get to a point where it's a natural time to change, um, and I think. When you work at a football club, it, you see everything that goes on behind the scenes. Um, and these decisions are never a sole decision, by the way. You, you're talking to your chairman, to your board, you're weighing things up. And you, listen, K- Kieran will be given time, for sure, because you know we, we want to put a specific model in place where we recruit, develop, recruit, develop. Um, and you, you know, you just said it, I think that's Wolf and Dunn is a prime example of that. He's a player who could well have easily been on his way out of this football club. You know, for what my football opinion's worth, I think he's been as good as anyone on the pitch since Kieran, Kieran's been here and fully deserves um, his, his place in the team. So I, I think all of that needs needs time. Um, and, you know, we will back Kieran, we will support Kieran um, with recruitment and infrastructure. And I think, look, where, where Kieran's, one of the, where the areas he's good in, there's a very methodical logical way of working that Kieran brings. So he, is, you can hold me to this because he may change and <laughs> he may want to do this, but th- thus far he hasn't said to me, look Mark, I want you to throw tons of money at players. What I want you to do is help me build infrastructure as well as players. So we've got to get the training ground right because right now the training ground just does not work. I think, every, you know, I've spoken to historic managers who've been here and they all say the same thing, the training ground just does not work. Too many people on site, pitches aren't good enough, facilities aren't good enough, it, it's a challenge. So one of the things Kieran's saying to me, and nothing ridiculous, I want you to back me in technology, I want you to back me in the quality of the pitches, I want you to back the infrastructure because that will ultimately allow us to develop players and bring more sustainable success. Um, and I think it's, it's that balance between where we spend the money. Um, you know, Kieran's right, the owners have been fantastic, they've been supportive um, and will continue to back this football club. We have so much to do, and it concerns me at times that the supporters and the key stakeholders, I don't think they fully understand just how run down this amazing football club has been over the last 10, 15, 20 years. Here at Portman Road, 
we are battling every day with so many different projects just to get this up to speed, up to date, let alone move, move it forward, and it takes time. The playing side is the same, whether that's the recruitment structure, whether that's the academy, the development squad, the pitches, the infrastructure. It shocked me, if I'm honest, in that first six months, just how far back the club had gone and the lack of investment into those key areas. And that's not me trying to be personal or criticise anyone, but you have to get that right. And I'd say that, I'd use the words that this is like turning an oil tanker, but it's not. This is like turning two super oil tankers. Uh, I've been shocked by the natural size of this football club, 29,000 against Sunderland, 27,000 against Wickham, there would have been 27,000 for the Lincoln game, 7,000 going three hours down the road to MK Dons. I'm blown away with it. I think Kieran used the word humbled. I think it's a really good good description of it. There is so much to do um, and there are only 24 hours in a day. We'll work the 24 hours, we'll work the seven hours, but my God, there is so much to do to get the football club back to where it needs to be on and off the pitch. And I think everything is going to take that little bit of bit of time. Is that something you sought assurances over, Kieran, when you took the job? You, you're not naive enough to know. I don't know what the average shelf life is of a yeah. manager in, in, in English football, but it's, it's not long, is it? Um, you've left a very good, yeah. stable job. That must have been something in your mind. What was the subject of time and patience one that was big in, in your initial conversations? Um, not in terms of contract length for, you know, I want a 10-year guaranteed contract and you can never ever get rid of me because um, I know how management works. I think when you go into that step, you know that even in the, the best willing of a long-term project, you have to win games and you have to win a certain amount of games along the way to give yourself the time and the momentum to, to make the long-term changes. So um, not looking for, a, I didn't speak about any guarantees about time in a, in, in a yeah, in a factual way. More so just about finding a project, finding something that I, I definitely wouldn't have um, been interested in making the move into something that I felt that was a, a three to six month firefight come in, you know, in, in our position, maybe have a run at the playoffs or go to a club that come in three months, try and keep us up or move on in the summer. That, that definitely wouldn't have been a move that I would have made, certainly not from the, as you said, the job role that I was in. So it was about finding a project um, that there was, yeah, there's the immediate and the winning requirements, but there's also the chance to build something. There's also the chance to improve, uh, improve and develop a football club, and that's that's the, one of the main attractions of the job here. Like Mark says, the 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 people, the the bit that people see on the pitch on a Saturday is is obviously the the, the most important part. But there's a lot of work to be done behind the scenes, and and when I come down and and um, saw everything firsthand, you, you can you can quickly feel and see how important the club is to everybody but you can also quickly see that you know from a facilities and an infrastructure level um, we've got a lot of work to do we're currently behind where where we want to be for where the ambitions of, of the division and and the the place in the football pyramid where we want this football club to be um, we're currently behind that in terms of you know certain aspects of the training ground and the infrastructure and even the the work that needs to be done at Portman Road to to bring it up to the the full condition what it deserves to be in so um yeah that's work that's going on you know behind the scenes that's work like mark says that i've i've been really probably most pushy with the club to say look on we need this improved we need this improved we need this improved um things that people won't see and they might not see the fruits of it until you know quite a bit further down the line um but if we make those changes behind the scenes if we make those investments in infrastructure then over a longer period of time, there's going to be an improvement in in what you see on the grass on a Saturday. But yeah, a new pitch or a new chamber or a new what bike or a new TV screen isn't gonna isn't gonna win you a game on Saturday. But one of the attractions of of this job for me was that I knew I was gonna have the backing to do those things. I knew I was gonna have the backing to put in place things that I know is right and that I believe in from my experience of where I worked and and also my personal belief. Um, I was going to have the opportunity to do that as well as trying to beat, you know, whoever we're facing on a Saturday. So, yeah, that that's yeah one of the most exciting bits of the job. It's an all-encompassing role. Um, I'm, I'm working and we're working with the staff really hard to win games on a Saturday, but we're working equally as hard behind the scenes to put things in place that, you know, we might not see the fruits of the labour 
for quite a while and in management you know if you lose 20 games in a row you might never see the, the fruits of them labors anyway but to me it's still right it's doing the right thing it's um, one of my big things when I've had conversations with Mark in the club and um, the directors is that I want to leave the club in a better place I want to whenever I, I leave whenever that might be and for whatever reason that is I want the, the club to be in a, in a better place behind the scenes um, to be able to hand it over so that you know Ipswich is, is set up in a sustainable way for a successful future and that's a, a really important part of what I want to do. Mark, one of the, the things that, that you've put in since since the summer is the performance team. That was obviously here when Kieran arrived. I'm I'm sure you're aware that the former the former manager here, um I think he he said he'd face significant daily challenges with fitness and training related to the performance team. Um clearly the performance team is there to, to help the team, isn't it? So I was wondering if you could explain the role of that how, how that made you feel to hear that and then um, and then just explain how important it is to what you're trying to do here uh, look, I think anyone who in the industry who knows Mark, with the performance team here and Andy Rolls and, and his team will, will all tell you the same thing they are ultra professional people who are experts in, in their field um, and the, the team of staff that I brought into this football club I'm sure would echo my sentiments and say they wouldn't want to be doing this without Andy and his team because we just we know how good they are and how professional they are. It's the same um, performance team uh, with Andy that we brought in that Paul had. Uh, it's exactly the same team. They're working exactly the same way with Kieran. So for me, I think I'll let Kieran answer it because Kieran works with them on a on a daily basis. Yeah, for me, I can I can say it's been been really helpful but just the, the norm of what I'm used to to be honest mm. um, yeah obviously Martin um, Pert my assistant knows knows Andy Rolls from from before from Watford um, and before we'd even spoken about coming here I'd, I'd spoken to me several times with him on a personal level just in saying he's, he's you know such a professional guy and one of the best professionals what he's worked with in football and Martin's work you know for a, a lot of different years and a lot of different backroom teams so that was one of the, again one of the attractions of the job to be honest was um, coming in I say the support from, from Mark in terms of you know uh, a role above and that link but also coming into somewhere where I knew there was a performance team already in place and I'd had really good references on Andy from from Martin and from other people you know from, from Arsenal and West Ham and the clubs that he's worked at before um, had really good references so that was a, an attraction coming in um, because that's the environment that I'm used to working in. I think, you know, as a, as a coach in this day and age, it was the same at Tottenham, the same at Man United, you know, the, the use of data, um, making sure that everything is periodised in the right way, making sure that the communication between, you know, coaches, sports scientists, medical team, analysis team um, is absolutely pivotal. So, you know, for example, at United, that was... That was one of my one of my key responsibilities was to have them morning meetings every morning with the, with the head of performance with the fitness coaches to to look at where we're at in the week to look at yeah the periodization to look at the data to to look at that on a micro level but also look at it you know on a macro level to see where the where the trends are over a longer period so yeah that process has been you know really really seamless for me here um, and it's obviously led by yeah Andy on the performance side and. Yeah, I really helped to, to have the morning meetings with them and, and go through the plans and, and make sure that every, the, the backroom team behind behind the team who are, who are so, so, so important, not Andy, but I could I could mention the rest of his staff as well, but I won't go through it all here. But I've, I've really delighted with what I've found um, in terms of the, the quality and the passion of the staff that are at the club already. Um, and that's enabled the, the work to really, you know, progress seamlessly from, from what I've been doing previously and what I like to do to what we're doing here now on a daily basis. So, yeah, for me, it's been it's been absolutely seamless, really, um, to how I'm used to working and, and uh, a relationship that I've enjoyed. And like Mark has, has gratefully said, I think the feedback's been really good from the players. They're enjoying the work on a daily basis. And I say that's obviously, you know, good to hear from myself and Martin and Charlie and Rennie and the coaching team but also credit to the to the big the big uh, team of staff behind the scenes at, at the training ground who are working really hard every day to make sure that we, we get players better and we improve the team <coughs> Is that team still growing the performance team or, or is it complete? Like, is that... I think it ever evolves mm. I, I, I think the world moves forward at, at, at a rate um, the use of technology moves forward at a rate 
Uh, and I think it will grow grow accordingly with that because it, it goes back to its part of the, if you like, the infrastructure that Kieran's so passionate about is if we can find professionals in key areas that give us advantage and take us forward, then we'll bring them in. This season, it's... Um I think I think we, we've talked about this season. Once Paul Cook had left, I remember you telling me this season is not dead. Um, I mean, it isn't, is it? It's we've seen over the last few weeks that gap's closed. Um, things are start. It feels like there's a bit of momentum here. It must be really exciting for you all. I, I think you're right. We, we and those the those are exact words that mm-hmm. I, I had with Keir when when <laughs> we met that. <laughs> 11 o'clock on that Sunday night, this season is not dead. And I think it would have been very easy and very simple at that point, if you like, to almost emotionally write the season off and just say, OK, let's plan for next season. And in some ways, that would have been simpler because Kieran could then have experimented with players, even more youngsters, etc., ahead of next season. But I never... Listen, we've still got a ton of... There's so many points to play for this season. Um, there'll be ups and downs, twists and turns, for sure, but... For me, the season is not dead until it's dead. Um, and, you know, I, th- I think we'd have all took the return on points we've had since Kieran and Martin and, and his team walked in the door. As I said earlier, the DNA, the, the clarity of his, how his teams play is becoming more and more clear. And no, the season <coughs> is well and truly alive. Kind of getting towards the end of our time, but we might be able to zip through a couple of quick ones. Yeah. Um, Ollie and Michael Carrick were there for the Doncaster game. Have you spoken to them since? What, what was their feedback? I, I doubt they've watched a lot of League One football in, in recent years. What, what did they make of, of the game? Yeah, they enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. Um, yeah, the feedback was really positive. I thought, like most people at the game that night, um, they thought it was a really good performance. Um, I'd, yeah, they'd been to the hotel in the afternoon and I've been in, in you know regular feedback with them anyway about the players and how I'm finding it and I say they've been watching quite a lot of the games as well anyway so they're forming their opinions on on players and things like that as everybody does when they watch football and that's the beauty of it so yeah I think they're they're in that that phase where they're enjoying watching football from a from a different perspective and I say having Ipswich to now watch and and have a big interest in is enjoyable for them um and yeah, their feedback was really positive, both about the the team and the style of play and how we were how we were doing things, but also individually. I won't won't name names because I don't want anyone's ego to get too big, and <laughs> I don't want anyone getting any uh, any headlines. But yeah, certainly a few of the individuals they picked out and, and were really impressed with, and um, yeah, they, they thought the quality was really high. So um, I tried to sign them both the next season. <laughs> I gave them my best shot, but they just yeah. weren't having it. <laughs> yeah, so no. Hopefully, we'll, we'll as I said, we'll hopefully see him down at Portman Road at some point. Mark, have you um, you spoken to Andy Holt recently? No comment. <laughs> um, no, look, I, no, I haven't. Um, I spoke to Andy in the summer on a couple of transfers. I haven't um, made my feelings quite clear to both the FA and the EFL, and then that's their job to to deal with it. What about contracts? For we've been talking about transfers, but there's obviously contracts up in the summer are those conversations beginning now what, were, they, were they well underway anyway though? no I, I think look I think you have to remember I, I have to remember we all have to remember how early we still are into Kieran's tenure here uh, and I think he he and his staff are still learning about players so I, I think we're aware of the contracts that, that, are, that are up in the summer um, you know you saw a handful of people move on in in, in uh, the transfer window we're really grateful to them for the service they gave the football club but it was natural it was just the time was up manager wanted to tighten the squad up a little bit um, and we'll move through the contracts as we move through the season but at the end of the day those decisions will be football led decisions which will come from Kieran I can only do the numbers and the contracts when a manager says that's what I want to do that's what I want to do and I think in fairness to Kieran he probably needs more time to, to fully assess those those players. Is that fair? Is that fair, Kieran? Is that Yeah, yeah, it's still early days. I say it's yeah, we've had yeah, I don't know what it is, maybe seven weeks or so and um it yeah, it's been, feels longer. It does feel longer. Yeah, yeah, got it does feel longer. Um yeah, and it's again still in that process of we're we're trying to win games. So like Mark said, it's not a case of let's just throw the kids in or let's just yeah, have a little experiment and have a look at everyone for next year or so. It's not been easy with it. the numbers. The numbers have trimmed down, but they're still, you know, we've still got a big squad. So it's making sure that we give ourselves 
good enough time and, and do due diligence on the players in the door first of all and make the right decisions for who's going to be the right ones to be part of it with us next year and who's going to be the you know who it's going to be right for for them or for us to to maybe they seek pastures new so yeah we're still in the process of that and we're, we're not in a big rush um to make them decisions just yet as i look over your right shoulder kieran there's a whiteboard there with a list of projects on it. <laughs> season tickets it is one of them we're coming up to that time of year is uh have you, have you have you got any things in the works, Mark? On on that, there is so there, it, there are so many things we work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, what a whiteboard! Um, there are lists after lists after lists of things that we we we're working through at the football club, um, and again, it's taking time. So season tickets, marketing plans, strategies, communication, staffing structures. Um, there'll be a, a, a a handful of new appointments coming into the non-playing side of the business um, in all of those key areas to take us forward because uh, you know I've said it before I said if, if this football club continually has done what it's done for the last 10 or 15 years the results will be the same as they've been for the last 10 or 15 years we've got to change we've got to adapt we've got to put more revenue streams in to take the football club forward we've got to in- embrace the whole digital age We've got to improve infrastructure, we've got to improve the stadium, the training ground. I could go on and on and on. Um, and it's mind-blowing at times. And I think what's key for me is, I touched earlier on with you, I'm still learning and still being shocked most weeks about the size of, of this football club and the passion of the, the fan base. I was, I'm shocked that we took 7,000 to, to MK Dons. I just, it was incredible, an incredible scene. And whatever the official numbers say, by the way, there were more Ipswich fans in that stadium than there were MK Dons fans. Let's be really clear about that. Um, and we have this amazing opportunity to rebuild this fantastic football club and take it back to where we all think it belongs. Mark Ashton, Kieran McKenna, Marcus Nash, Luke Waren, Andy Rolls, Martin Pert, Mike O'Leary. We can't do this on our own. We physically can't. We have to engage and embrace all of the fans, the key stakeholders, the commercial customers, everyone around this football club, because only if we are together, working in line with a common vision, can we do this. It's too, it's, it would be easier sometimes if you're at a smaller football club, but this is a real big football club that we all need to make sure we're pulling together to turn around. I'm delighted we've got Kieran here, but Kieran and I are only parts of this football club. Everyone's got to pull together. And I think we saw that that type of power, if you like, with 7,000 fans going away on, on, on Saturday. You met Ed Sheeran yet? That's a question for uh, for everyone that comes into this football club. Have you have you managed to meet him yet? No, not yet. Obviously, he was at the, the game last week at home, so I think that was his first game, as I believe, since I've been here. So, no, he was, was busy on match day, but great that he was there. Obviously, yeah, having yeah such a, a high profile and such a loyal and passionate supporter is um is massive for the club and, and the back and what he's given the club on, on different levels. So, it's great to have his support. Hopefully, we can... Um, give him something to sing about <laughs> going forward what's the ceiling to this project then we've can't talked a lot about projects no, there's no ceiling there's, there's no there's no there's no there's no this is too special a football club to put a ceiling on it you look at clubs who have been you know sustainable in the Premier League for, for many a year whether it's I don't know whether it's a Bournemouth whether it's a Leicester whether it's a West Brom They've, they've had 10-year spells plus in, in the Premier League. One of them went on to win the Premier League. I don't think you can put a ceiling on this football club. You, you dare not, because it, this football club's done it before. Um, we had a lovely dinner 14 days ago with yeah. 10, 12 former players from different eras. Um, and part of that was an education for us to learn about the football club, for them to meet us and learn about what Kieran's trying to do. And after you speak to them, you come out of it and it... It just reminds you in different eras what this football club has achieved. There is no reason why it can't do it again. So I would not put a lid on it. How did you find that evening with those with those players? That must have been there must have been some in there that you'd have watched growing up, some that you'd have known out maybe from, from parents telling you about them and some that you were probably similar age to. So it yeah. must have been must have been quite an interesting evening for yourself. Yeah, it was really enjoyable actually, yeah. I say I was I was cross paths with Darren Bent as a player at Tottenham, so like ones from him and Darren Ambrose who were who were that age to people like Russell Osmond who have heard about off my dad and he would tell me about those teams and, and the players in those teams. So 
yeah, again, it was yeah that was probably one of them moments that was humbling almost when you you stood there and you're talking to them about the plans and the project and what we're trying to do on the football side of it and and these are people who have achieved amazing things with the football club and and being at the football club at the highest point so. Um, yeah, an enjoyable evening, um, humbling to, to stand there in front of them. Um, and yeah, all good people and all want the best for Ipswich. And you see just how much, you know, this, this club becomes a part of people. Um, how much they love the area because nobody seems to ever leave Suffolk <laughs> whenever they move to it. So I've told, I've told my wife that that's us now. We're probably here for life. So um, yeah, you can just see how much it means to them and, and how much they still have a passion and following for the club. And, and we want them we want them to be part of it, like Mark says. We, we need everybody in it together. So the people who've been such a big part of the club, we want them to feel we want them to feel part of it, and we want them to be part of it in a genuine way. Okay. How are the owners? Um, I think as Brett's cut healed up after his celebrations, yeah, um, you couldn't write it, could you? Kieran, are you speaking? Are you in contact with the, the owners directly as, as well? How have you found them so far? Yeah, we've had a couple of calls with them, with with myself and Mark on the line. Obviously, I, I met the the guys when they were here for the games over the Christmas period, and. And had a few uh, cups of tea with them at the Salt House as well when they were staying. So, um, yeah, really, really positive people. Really, um, yeah, like just really um, pos- positive and passionate about the project. Been really supportive of me so far. Um, really want us to kick on and do well this year. But again, have been really supportive in terms of the message of, you know, it's a, they're in it for the long term. We want to get it right. Don't rush things. Do the right thing. Do the right thing by the club. Um, and we'll support you all the way. So I don't think you can ask for for any more than that. I think Kieran summed it really well. They they they, they want us to build this. They, they listen. Everyone wants success quickly, and the owners want success quickly. We all do. But they're also really logical, sensible people that say, "Build it. We do. This is a long term investment for us. Get it right. Get the infrastructure right." Um, and they're just really supportive. Um, you know, in in the transfer window, they're always saying the same thing: "Do you need more? Do you need more help?" Do you need more help to acquire players in the first team? Do you need more help to acquire players in the development squad? And what Kieran and I have, have said is, look, the development squad's a prime example. We want to invest and recruit into that. But we've got to get the infrastructure right. The pitches have got to be right. Everything's got to be right behind the scenes. So the guys in the US are, are great, really supportive. I can't thank, you know, from from Mark Steed to Ed Schwartz, the three Lions down, that they've been great. Um, and on the ground, we've got Michael Leary. That, don't underestimate his importance either, by the way, because um, he's great guidance for me. Um, it's not an easy job. Um, you know, he's been brilliant with me as well, I have to say. Mark obviously has a, a more long-standing relationship with him, but he was in on the phone calls as well before I took the job when we were first um, when we were first having them conversations and and so supportive of myself and I could feel that the support that he had between behind Mark making the decision to, you know, appoint a young a young first time manager and he was really behind that and and ever since I've I've taken a job he's always there with a text. He's there with a text on the good days when you win and he's he's been there with a text on the bad days when you don't and he's he's been at the training ground to see us and have a cup of tea and just a a, a really nice man, calm and figure, experienced man in terms of managing people and, and giving me some good good insight and good advice on that so yeah it, it's definitely um, been an important relationship for me as well How have you been on the, the bad days I know you said before <laughs> it's uh, the, yeah. the ones that take a little bit longer to get out your system that's senior management what are your Saturday nights like are you, do, do you sleep or what, what are you like yeah um, probably typical I think I, I usually get to sleep I usually get to sleep on a Saturday night no matter what but I might wake up at 2am Tossing and turning, if uh, well, even if it has gone our way at times. So, yeah, the, I think it's it's the nature of the job and the nature of my, my personality is to be obsessive about things. So, it's not easy to switch off. Um, I do try and I do try and base base my reflections off performance, not not just result. I think sometimes you know you can't in football base everything off the results. Sometimes it can be width of a post. You can it can come off someone's knee and go in the net one way or the other. So. Um, I think usually if we've if we've performed how I've wanted to us to perform, if the players have, have shown the intent to put the things into practice, I can live with that. The days in, in my career so far, even as a coach, where you're more disappointed is, is when you haven't seen them things and them's the ones that probably uh, ruin your Sundays a little bit more. Um, I don't think there's been any of them so far, to be honest. Obviously, we've lost games and you're very disappointed when we do that. But in general, I think the attitude and the intent of the players has been right. And... Um, when that's the case, you can, yeah, I say you can, you're going to have 
you're going to have wins and you're going to have losses and you have to learn to deal with them both. I have to say, I think it's one of the things I, I found quite comforting with Kieran is there's not that much difference in him whether we've won or lost. There's a consistency and as he said, probably we trust the process. And he'll say the same to me, trust the process, trust the process. Um, and I like the fact that when we have a good win, he doesn't get wildly happy. He's disappointed when we lose, but he doesn't get wildly down. It's, it's back to the plan, back to the process. You hear a lot of managers say that. <laughs> they say the words, but then yeah. we, we see we see you guys within minutes yeah. of the final whistle. Um, I genuinely get the feeling with you that you, you yeah. manage to stay on that on that level, that you, you kind of take strip away the emotions from it and, and manage yeah. the logic is logic logical brain is something we're hearing a lot about you meticulous. Is that is that no. one of your big strengths? Would you would you say? Um, I think so. Look, maybe they say your strengths are your weaknesses. So <laughs> maybe it'll be a weakness at some point or in a certain situation. But yeah, it's how, it's how I try and and try and think things through. I will try and think about yeah, think logically, break down the performance, um, the ingredients of the performance that we we've, we've worked on that we looked for, and yeah, even on your even on your best day, there's going to be bits that could have been better and bits of the performance that weren't quite right. And even on your worst day, there's going to be bits of the performance that were, you know, that were right. So, yeah, I try and stay pretty balanced with it. I think, yeah, maybe interview, get my wife on the next podcast. I think she'd be able to give me <laughs> yeah. a, yeah, a, a, a more detailed perspective of just how well I managed to, to brush off the bad days. But, yeah, I think I do, I do certainly um, try and stay balanced and try and think about things from a logical point of view. We'll get a date in the diary for that one. Then, so <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How, how do you switch off? Like, what are your, what are your kind of away from football things to, to kind of switch off and, and do, something, do yeah. something? Do you have time to do anything different? No, to be honest, in season is family. In season is football and family, and um, football and family is is ninety nine percent of it. It's um, yeah, we're up and away before. We're up and away when it's very 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 dark, um, and you're not home until you know dinner time so when I do get the chance it's, it's a couple of hours with the kids and with the wife is, is, the, is the bit of the day that I look forward to get a few hours before with them before the kids go to bed and then after that it's um, usually the laptops back out and I'm watching football and planning for the next day so um, yeah it's, it's football and family um, in season most of the time obviously I've got a, a good base of friends spread around who I try and see when I can um, but that's difficult in season I'd, I'll try and enjoy the off season I do enjoy I do enjoy playing golf and um, getting back to Ireland and, and seeing old friends and seeing family back there and say getting on the golf course or on the tennis courts or um, yeah doing some things away from football but that tends to be be in the off season um, yeah international breaks hopefully I think that's a that's a goal for us is a, is to get through the division so <laughs> international breaks is has previously been a, a time you know at the level I've been working at where you get a little chance to switch off but in League One. It's it's pretty relentless, and I know it's going to be it's going to be full on all year. So no, it'll be foot to the floor until um, April, hopefully May. Hopefully it'll be foot to the floor until May, but let's see. And then I'll enjoy some yeah some really good family time, but also catch up with friends and and take time for some other interest then. Mark, so if we see some some transfers come into this club in the summer from some fringe international nations, <laughs> we uh, we know we know what they're we know what yeah. they're here for. You've got it. Yeah, you've got <laughs> yeah it. exactly. Anything yeah. you. Either of you want want to say before before we wrap up the floor the floor is yours a message to the fans any anything you you wanna you wanna tell people that I, are listening for, for for me again it, it, it has to be thank you um, because again the way people of Ipswich and Suffolk I keep saying this but I've welcomed myself my staff Kieran and others around the football club has just been in, I'm going to use Kieran's words really really humbling I think that's a really good description. Um, I'd keep echoing togetherness because I think together we don't put a ceiling on this. Together we can achieve, we can achieve anything. Um, and you know we we've got loads of areas that we and I can improve on. Um, communication being one, we can never communicate too much. Um, but just a big thank you for the fans and the way they've been because they've been truly incredible. Kieran. No, the same. Um, I won't. I won't go over all the ground. But yeah, it's a big thank you, and, and probably the next word that that tingles with me there probably is the togetherness. I think it's it's um it's not easy in this day and age in the world of you know um, the way the world is. Everyone wants everything now. It's easy to find negativity out there in in the world or negativity in in the media or on social media. But um, I just hope that we can we can stick together through it. I think hopefully the the supporters can 
see that there's people in here who are really passionate about the football club at, at all levels who really want to do the right things for the football club um, we're certainly not going to get everything right um, there's going to be mistakes made I'm, I'm in my first job as a manager so I'm going to make some mistakes as well so um, I think it's it's um, you know the, the biggest effort what we can do as a football club is everybody stick together um, stay behind the, the team stay behind the players on the pitch um, keep supporting the, the club in a fantastic way that they have been and, and hopefully everyone who the club means so much to can go to bed at night and sleep well knowing that you know um, the staff of the club are, are putting in every every ounce and every grain of effort to, to bring this great football club back up closer to where it belongs. Seems like a perfect way to end things for me, Mark Ashton, Kieran McKenna. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you.